Let's talk about this now with Pete Thamel from Sports Illustrated, Sid Ziegler, co-founder of Outsports.com, and NFL punter Chris Cluey. Welcome to you all. And Pete, let me begin uh, with you. Right after this announcement was made, you wrote a big story in Sports Illustrated that did stir up some controversy, sure. even though NFL officials like uh, the commissioner, Roger Goodell, have been very supportive of this publicly. You quoted several off the record, uh, suggesting that Sam has a daunting path ahead. The NFL's not ready for him. One said it's still a man's man's game. Uh, do you stand by that reporting? Do you think these private comments are more reflective of the public support we've seen for this? Well, certainly this is obviously a seminal moment in uh, sport and in, and in culture right now. But I, I still think Michael Sam has a barrier to break. And I think the NFL, as a player, looks at him skeptically. And I do think there's the dreaded word distraction, George, that keeps coming keep up. Keep seeing it, yeah. Yeah, and, and I really think that that's the next step. It's going to take a strong owner, a strong general manager, a strong coach in order to draft Michael Sam because he's not a slam dunk prospect. That's the, that's his prospects to get into the league. But sit on, on this other question of, you know, how welcoming the league is going to be if he gets in. You know, this Richie Incognito report out of Miami does, you know, reinforce the views of those who say this is going to be a hard fight. You know, Jim Bozinski and I at Outsports, we have written about over 200 athletes who have come out on their teams and publicly in every sport, including football, at every level, uh, in every state of the country. And every single one of them says the same thing. Before they came out, they heard a lot of homophobia on the team. When they came out, they were completely embraced by their team. And this includes uh, a football player at Middle Tennessee State, Alan Gender, who was out the entire four years he played at Middle Tennessee State. After they came out, they are embraced by their teammates. And the people who are the most homophobic in the locker room before they came out are the first guys to come up to them, shake their hand, and apologize for what they said. People get it. And all this stuff about the horrors of the NFL locker room is completely over overblown. You spent eight years in NFL locker rooms. I, I agree with Sid. It's, it's very much, um, if you haven't been inside an NFL locker room, you don't understand the camaraderie, the, the teamwork that goes on in there. Because when you're in the locker room during the season, you spend more time with your teammates than you spend with your, your family. Like, you're there for 10, 11, 12 hours a day. And so you get to know guys really well. And I've, I've always said that I think the, the main problems are going to come from executives and front office because they're, they're stuck in this older mindset, this older mentality, and they need to figure out, do they want to be Branch Ricky or do they want to be Ben and, Chapman? And you believe you were cut in part because of your, you were outspoken on the issue uh, of gay rights. You spent some time with Michael Sam last Saturday before mm -hmm. the announcement. Is he ready for all this? I think, uh, I think he is as much as he can be. I don't know that anyone's ever really ready for a moment like that, but I think he's well prepared. I think he's an intelligent, articulate young man. And I think he has the tools that it takes to, to deal with those isolated incidents where people are, are going to have issues with him because of his sexuality. I, those I think are, he'll be okay. Pete Thamel, those are the psychological issues. You were pointing out that, you know, the physical um, barriers ahead facing Michael Sam. Some people say he's not fast enough. Some people say he's not big enough. Do you think, bottom line, that the, the act of coming out increases or decreases his chances? I think, George, in the bottom line, it would decrease it because I had one former general manager tell me, in an NFL draft room, when you were sitting there, okay, we pick in five spots. These, we're going we're gonna to pick between these three players. The general manager told me, well, that could break a tie. Well, you know, if we're in the sixth round, do we want to want to bring in again that dreaded D word, the, the, the distraction? And, you know, the, the general manager told me it probably wouldn't be a good situation for a first-year head coach. And there, there are a lot of sort of built-in excuses. NFL people are risk-averse at the end of the day. And so I, uh, I'm optimistic for Michael Sam. It's, it's a wonderful story. I hope he really gets a true chance to get drafted and show what he can do on the field. Could be a very different situation from Jason Collins, who was at the end of his career in, in the NBA, but this could be a struggle. Why is it that the, we in the media have brought this struggle to the story? There is no evidence that this is going to be a struggle. Again, every athlete Getting into that, the league? Yeah, why is it going to be a struggle? Why would it be any more so than for anybody else? The NFL teams, their whole goal is to get to the biggest media circus and the most distracting game of the entire season, the Super Bowl. And we are, we are putting out there that some general manager is going to worry about a couple cameras showing up at practice and asking a few questions. If a general manager and a coach cannot handle a gay player in the locker room, they should resign, not because of social justice issues, but if, if, if that can torpedo your season, you're not doing your job. On the margins, do you think it'll make a difference? Um, I think it will, and I think it's unfortunate because there, there are general managers and executives that simply believe this way and they're not going to change their mind. And I think it's our job as a society to hold them accountable, to not let them get away with plot 
plausible excuses of, oh, well, he's not just the right fit, or you know, maybe he, he doesn't quite you know, work well with, with the locker room chemistry. It's, it's our job as citizens to say Michael Sam deserves a fair chance, not because he's a gay football player, but because he's a football player and he wants to go out and play football. I think we can all agree on that. We all hope he gets a fair chance. Thank you all very much. You can read an excer excerpt of Chris Cluey's book, Beautifully Unique Sparkle Ponies, at abcnews.com slash this week. And when we come back, Kevin Spacey from House of Cards is here live. There he is.